In my last two tree videos I explored how many billboard and low poly trees I could have separately in Godot without any optimizations. So in this video, building on that, I will showcase my own little tree system that populates the map with trees then manages multiple LOD levels for each tree. The idea being, if the player is close the tree will switch to a detailed model. If the player is far away it will switch to a billboard. So the performance should be much better even with better looking trees. In this build I have billboards, low detailed, and high detail trees. I've started to call this tree set, the ugly Christmas tree. Anyway, it's pretty easy to see the block that the player is on has detail trees. The adjacent blocks have low detail trees, and all blocks beyond have billboards. Whenever the player moves between two blocks all the trees that need to change states are getting deleted and then recreated on a single frame. The result is a pretty significant lag spike. Now, in this build, when moving to a new block, instead of creating all of the detailed trees from scratch in front of the player and destroying all of the ones behind, I'm simply moving the trees from their old positions to new ones. Moving objects around is much less performance intensive than deleting or generating new ones. So I exploit this by creating pools, or a really big list, of all of the unused trees. Whenever I need to change a detail tree to a low detail tree, for example, instead of deleting the detailed copy, I hide it and add it to the detail pool. So whenever I need a detail tree again, instead of creating a new one, I grab an unused one from the pool and set its location, rotation, and scale to match the new tree. With this optimization there is no longer a lag spike between two blocks. As you can see, I've made some major changes to the code to allow the tree system to generate over time rather than hang on a single frame at the start for 30 seconds. I even added a progress bar. Once the world is finished generating you'll see that 3D trees are being updated more dynamically over a larger area while not impacting performance any more than before. Actually less. Basically, whenever the player moves between two blocks, now instead of updating all the blocks on a single frame, I add blocks that need to be updated to a custom priority query. And they will all update over several frames with the closest blocks updating first. Every tree that it finds that needs to be updated gets added to a tree query with a priority based on the player's position as well. Only so many trees can be updated and removed from the query on a single frame. So the system never does too much work within a short time that would cause lag or frame rate drops. Additionally, I found that Godot billboards just don't work for what I need. They rotate to match the camera's rotation not its position causing a weird effect. They also flip whenever the camera rotates upside down. So I've coded my own billboards using a query for rotating all the billboards in the world to the player's position every time the player moves between two blocks. In this build you can see it if you look closely. The wave of billboards rotating slightly in the background. With priority querying this has no relevant cost to performance. Now that my LOD system is working well enough, it's time to make better trees. My first attempt at modeling a realistic but also stylized pine tree didn't turn out as well as I hoped. It also performed badly but to be fair the high detailed level was like 7000 triangles. At least 5000 more than it needed for what it looked like. So I went back into Blender and made some improvements. I even added dead branches. It doesn't look great, but I don't think it looks bad either. It has, four, LOD levels that match fairly well. Okay, so you'll notice a massive performance increase here. The trees have lower triangle counts and more LOD levels. But most of the credit for the increase goes to some changes in the graphics settings which I now realize kind of invalidated some of my original stress tests. My shadow size was set to 17,000. 
I reduced it to 8000 and hardly noticed any difference aside from an extra 20 frames per second. I also had two sons in my scene, deleting one helped a lot. So, in earlier builds I could have had a higher frame rate. I've been using this scene up until now because it was good for testing the performance of a large forest. But with everything working well at this point it's time to move on from this scene for good. Actually, there is one more altered version of this scene I want to try out first. Someone in my last tree video asked me to try generating 1 million trees. I accepted the challenge. It's going to take a while to finish so I'll skip ahead. 1,102,500 trees. I didn't change a single line of code. I just scaled up the size of the map to about 10 kilometers and increased the tree limit. My tree system as it is, without optimizing it for a larger world like this can handle this better than I expected to be honest. I'm sort of cheating by hiding the horizon behind a layer of fog. But there are over 1 million persistent trees being updated in this scene. If I was really going to create a forest this size for my game I would probably code it much differently. So now let's try out that original mountain map again with my new tree system. The tree system only generates 6,000 trees on this tiny map now that they are more appropriately scaled for large pine trees. You see this lone red tree. I got inspired to make this tree after seeing an image online of something similar in a dark conifer forest. I call it a blood oak and eventually I want to make a better version and give it some lore. But I was lazy and didn't put much effort into this version of the tree. I've split my code into multiple nodes, each with their own role. The top-level tree system script has the role of initializing everything and then calling the init methods of the tree generator and tree manager scripts. The tree manager does all of the thinking and decides which tree should be at what LOD level. Then it gives the tree generator which actually does the updating the orders. Under the tree generator I have tree profiles. This is how I add new trees to my system. If I want a new tree, I just create a new profile and my code does all the rest. A tree profile holds all of the LOD levels of the new tree and multiple generation variables like how rare the tree is. I set the blood oak to extremely rare so only about one is generated for every 1000 abundant pine trees. I'll add back the ugly Christmas tree just for demonstration. You see, it works. Now I will undo this.
Later down the road when I'm motivated to work on my tree system again, I plan to completely rewrite the system because the idea of having modular trees has really started to appeal to me the more I work on this. Right now, if I want a new tree, I must go into Blender and model that new tree by hand and tediously create four LOD levels and make sure they line up. The idea of making modular branches and trunks, each with their own LOD levels, and then having Godot create a forest full of unique trees for me opens many interesting possibilities. Pine trees on the edge of the forest should have branches that reach all the way down to their base on the side that is in the open. I could do that with a modular tree generator. But for now, I have a million other things I want to do in Godot. So that will be all for this video. In my next video, I will not even mention the word tree. Thanks for watching.